This is the Breathe London homepage and the map shows the levels of pollution for two different pollutants, PM2.5 and nitrogen dioxide. These pollutants are measured because they are associated with poor health and are known to contribute to illness and death in the long term. The daily air quality index, as used in the UK, can be seen from the number and the colour of each dot on the map. This starts by showing you with PM2.5 levels, but by clicking on this button here, you can change it to nitrogen dioxide. For more information about, about the health effects of each of these pollutants, if you scroll to the bottom, you will find air quality guidelines and health link. This will take you to another page with more information. The bottom of the map it also shows you the UK's daily air quality index, which is broken into 10 steps and is color coded by bands and also by number. If you're interested in pollution in a specific area, there's two ways of getting to your local area. You can either use the zoom in and zoom out button on the left hand side, or you can double click with the left mouse key on an area and it will zoom in from there. And as usual, but you can hold down the left mouse key and pan the map to move it about. To access information on a specific node, you can either click on the map on a specific dot, or you can go to the bottom here where there is a node search option and you can click on that and then type in a name or part of a name here to uh, start searching for options. As well as the name or the type of uh, location, such as a hospital or a school, you can also type an area into this search to uh, return ones within specific boroughs or specific areas. So for example, here in Havering, we can see the uh, nodes that are in the area and are uh, currently being deployed. From there, if you click on the name of the node, it will take you to its own specific sub page, which has information um, about where the node is, why it's been positioned there, a, pos a photograph of it in its environment, and lower down a map showing you exactly where the node is located. And then below that, we have time series data. This is data over a specific period. And you can adjust this by clicking on the date. And for example, changing this instead of from the 8th to the 15th, because it starts with a default of a week, we can take it back and do it from the 3rd. So you click on, uh, click on the start date, and then you can just drag with the left mouse key to the end date, release it, and it redraws the uh, time series for you. Uh, it shows PM2.5 and then below it nitrogen dioxide. At the bottom of the graph, we have some toggle switches here, which enable you to display the UK annual objective, the WHO annual guideline and the WHO daily guideline. I'll just turn on the UK annual objective for now. It is important to remember the time periods for these. So this dotted line is the threshold for the whole year. So you may see short term peaks above this line, but this does not mean that this particular threshold has been exceeded. In the top right of each of the graphs, you will see these three lines. If you click on this with the left mouse key, it opens up another menu which enables you to download this graph image as four different types, PNG, JPEG, PDF, or an SVG. It also enables you to download the underlying data 
this can be downloaded as a uh, CSV, comma separated variable, or as an Excel file. There is also the option if you just want to look at the data but not download it to view it as a table rather than as a graph. Now, if you're looking to use the data from the Breed London um, website as, as part of an automated package, uh, right at the bottom, you will see a section for developers. And if you click on that, new page opens and here you will find information about our API. You need to register to use it. Sign up there. And then at the bottom, there is a guide which tells you the various elements of the API that you can use for getting the information on the sensors and the data from the sensors. Now we'll look at how pollution behaves. It's important to remember that pollution is nearly always made up of a number of sources. Sometimes these sources are local, sometimes they're regional, and sometimes they're international. So I'm going to look at Spring Farm Park in Havering. Uh, this is a site located at the edge of a uh, sports and recreation ground and is away from major local road sources. I'm going to look at PM 2.5 uh, because this is more influenced by these non-local sources I mentioned. And the period I'm going to look at is the um, 20th of August 2023 through to the 12th of September 2023. You can think of uh, pollution as being a bit like a layered birthday cake. We can have the bottom layer, which is pollution that's coming in from uh, international sources, a mid layer, which is uh, pollution from regional sources, say the whole of the southeast, another layer, which is the urban area, the whole of London. And then on top of that, we have candles, which represent the individual local point sources. Now, if you look at the graph, uh, on the left hand side, you can see there is very little change in the levels and those levels are all fairly low. This is, um, represents a, a clean airflow coming into the area basically. So it doesn't change much and it's not bringing much pollution with it. On the right hand side, by contrast, you can see not only that the pollution is going up on a regular daily basis, but the actual bottom, the baseline, is gradually increasing. This is indicative of a, an influx of polluted air. So that bottom layer coming in from international sources is gradually bringing in pollution and the local sources on top of that and the regional sources are adding onto it. So we have a gradually increasing baseline with uh, peaks on top of it. You will notice that those peaks are quite wide. They are basically following a pattern that follows the course of the day because we get different reactions during the course of the day. So it goes up and down at different times during the day. So that's an import episode. And if you looked at um, the graphs for sites that weren't near this one, you would see the same sort of profile because this affected the whole of the southeast and the whole of London. And it goes up and down and rises the same. By contrast, these peaks in the middle of the graph on the tw uh, 29th, 30th and 31st are point sources. These are very local. This was as a result of a fire occurring nearby and what happened was the fire was damped down and then reignited. If you looked at other sites around this area, you would see this point foot spot source of a fire impacting them as well. But if you look further away outside of the area into other boroughs, for example, you don't see these peaks. This is how to tell if it's a local source. And also you can see that the profile of it is markedly different. Whilst all fires and all local sources are slightly different, it's quite common to see this at a local source 
will rise quickly and then drop quickly again. Those spikes represent the candles on the cake. You can see that there's not much coming from the general layer. The bottom stays about the same level. It doesn't rise, but we get a very distinct candle-like peak. The previous example where we examined particulate matter was at a background site. We're now going to look at a roadside site and look at nitrogen dioxide, which is one of the uh, primary pollutants that we get as a result, especially of uh, traffic emissions. Uh, we're going to look at Malibone Road, uh, which is one of the big monitoring sites that also has a Breed London node, uh, and it's one of the um, busiest roads in London. The period that I'm going to look at is back in December 2022 because it shows two very important distinctions in terms of how pollution behaves. So once again, we can see where the site is, what the current pollution level is. I've pre-selected the period I want to look at up here, as we showed before. And now we're looking at nitrogen dioxide. So road traffic generally follows the pattern of a more, in London especially, of a morning and evening uh, peak. And we can see this here on the 6th of December. You'll notice that the pop-up has the date on it, it has the time on it, and it has the pollutant level at that time. So we can see a peak at 8 o'clock. The morning rush hour drops off a bit, the pollution levels drop. And then the afternoon rush hour kicks in, starting here quite early at Malibone Road, as it always does, which is about three o'clock. Much more of a gradual drop off during the evening and then overnight. Due to a combination of weather and traffic levels, the pollution drops down there. So that's a fairly normal day with no particular pollution buildup. What then happened was uh, we had very cold, still conditions start. So the next day we get again, we get the morning rise of the pollution, eight o'clock, nine o'clock. But this time due to the change in the weather, the pollution that's been emitted doesn't clear as well as it did the previous day and it starts to build up. So whereas we would have, on the previous day, we saw a dip, it levels off. And then we get the rise again from the evening pollution to take it up into the evening and then that again doesn't clear overnight in the same way. This is what causes local pollution episodes when the pollution doesn't clear and builds up locally. So this is as a result of the local emissions and it's causing a problem locally. Whereas for the PM 2.5, we can have a combination of it being imported pollution or local emissions. Nitrogen dioxide is much more driven by the local emissions. We hope this brief guide to finding information on the Breathe London webpage has been useful, but it hasn't covered all things that are on there. There are options on this top bar for other areas. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you will find information for uh, different groups who might wish to participate in the network. And right at the bottom, there is more information and options, and it gives you uh, contact details and our uh, social media feeds as well.